All sacrifices laid upon the altar, all commitment, consecration made, all vows that were made unto you, O Lord, we pray you affirm and confirm everything in Jesus' name. The mind to follow, the heart to follow, until the very end, we pray that you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, until we win the crown, until we receive the reward, until we see you face to face on that glorious day, until we go through those pearly gates into heaven, until we see you face to face and then see all the beloved that have gone ahead. Oh Lord, we pray, we'll not stop our journey halfway in Jesus' name. We'll fight the good fight of faith. We lay hold on the plow. And we're not going to look back in Jesus' name. Whatever it takes, Lord, we're going to give. And we're asking, Lord, all the grace we need, all the anointing we need, all the power we need, all the backbone we need, all the uncompromising, conquering spirit we need, give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Encourage your people. Strengthen your people. Empower your people. And Lord, we pray, east and west and north and south and center, we're going to go through everywhere, every village, every city, every town, Every community, we're going to preach this gospel. And souls are going to come to the Lord in Jesus' name. We will not be tired. We will not give in. We will not cave in. We will not give. We're going to do this, this work until the very end in Jesus' name. Once again, we lay everything on your altar. I will pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost will consume every sacrifice in Jesus' name. Because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We praise the name of the Lord for the session we have now as we look at the overcomer. We look at the conqueror. We look at the people that will not give up in the day of battle. And we want to overcome on the way. As we go into the promised land, there is a world to come. And it is eternal. There is a world to come. And it is heavenly. There is a better country we're going to. And every one of us, by the grace of God and the strength of the Lord, we're going to reach that place in Jesus' name. Uh, you want to see that the Word of God talks about this in the Word. And it talks about this as a greater city, a better city, a heavenly city. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading here from verse 14. It says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. They seek a country that's a better place than this, a better world than this world. We're seeking a country, and truly, in verse 15, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is and heavenly, where, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. He has prepared a city for us. You'll be there. I said you'll be there. I will be there too in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter, five, chapter 6, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 6, we're looking at verse 5. It tells us, and I've tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. The world to come. That's a better world, a higher world, a heavenly world. That's the world to come. That's the eternal world. You see, we have tasted while we're here. We have tasted the good word, the gospel you're hearing. That's a good word that's coming from above. 
the grace that came to our lives for salvation and the grace that came for sanctification and the grace that came for the infilling, for the immersion, for the baptism, for the enveloping of the Holy Ghost in our lives that brought us courage, the courage of the conqueror, that brought us power, the power to go into all the world and evangelize, that brought the power to be witnesses unto Christ. We got that from the world to come. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father. And when I get to the Father, I will send that Holy Ghost. And if you have that, if you have that Holy Ghost that brought conviction and conversion and consecration and sanctification and the power from on high, that came from the world to come. And as you have tasted that here already, you are now on your journey to that eternal Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, he calls heaven the world to come. It's the promised eternal world. In Luke, Luke chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 28. Luke 18, verse 28, then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee and followed thee. We have left all. I tell you, if you have not left something, you have not you are not following the age. There's something for you to leave behind. And it's not even all, it's not all those things that are evil. Of course, you leave your sin made. But there are some things that are not sinful. Like the net that Peter had, he left all that behind. The trade he had, he left all that behind. The acquaintances, fellow fishermen that did not follow Jesus Christ, all those friends, he left them behind. And the hinder him from accomplishing what God has called him to, he left everything. Not only Peter, James, and John, and Matthew, and all the rest of them. They said, we have left everything, we have left all, and we have followed thee. There must be something you have left. There must be something you have rejected. There must be something you have refused. Moses re refused something. And all the people that follow after the Lord, there was something they left behind. And I dare challenge you, check up your life. Check up your Christian profession. Have you left something behind? And look at what Jesus said. And he said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left house. Sometimes that's necessary. Or parents, necessary. Or brethren, necessary. Or wife, necessary. Or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come. You see that language? The language of Jesus Christ. There is a world to come, eternal. A blessed world. Better and higher and greater than what you see here today. And then it says, you have left that for the kingdom of God, for the, then you have life everlasting. You have life everlasting in Jesus' name. That's why as we have gone through the series on the churches, the message to the church in Ephesus, the message to the church in Smyrna, the message to the church in Pagamos, the message to the church in Tatira. The message to the church is the message to the church in uh, Philadelphia. The message to the church in Laodicea. Absolutely, we looked all through that. We're not summarizing everything. Overcomers in the promised eternal world. At the end of every message, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about the overcomer. Look at chapter two of Revelation, verse seven. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He that are here, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The same message to all the churches, not just the seven churches of Asia Minor now, to all the churches in every generation until the end of time. He that has an ear to hear. You see, there are people that didn't have ears to hear. When Jesus came into this world, the Pharisees did not have ears to hear. The Sadducees did not have ears to hear. Multitudes of those religious people did not have ears to hear. Eventually, the Holy Ghost came down. 
And there were people on the day of Pentecost, even though 3,000 people were born again, in multitudes of them did not have ears to hear. In chapter 3 of Acts of the Apostles, the, that man that was lame rose up. And we're told in chapter 4 that, you know, the Sanhedrin, they called the people. They said, by what authority, by what name have you done this? And Peter told them, it is done in the name of Jesus. I know salvation in any other. It is only the name of Jesus. They imprisoned them. They locked them up. They threatened them. They need to hear. So here, in chapter 5, you will know that even the shadow of Peter was healing the sick. In the midst of it all, all those leaders called them. They said, have we not told you and warned you and threatened you not to preach in this name? They need to hear to hear but it says he that has ears to hear i pray you'll have ears to hear i said you'll have ears to hear there are people they hear the word of salvation they don't have ears word of sanctification holiness they don't have ears to hear they hear the word of the holy ghost baptism he shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnessing both in jerusalem and judea and then he said to the uttermost part of there they don't have ears to hear they have been hearing for seven years and ten years and twenty years they have not been filled in the holy ghost they don't have ears to hear and now all the messages are given to the church and the lord jesus said every time at the end of every message you want to get to heaven you want to get to that better place you want to get to that promised eternal world he that has ears to hear let him hear what the spirit is saying unto the churches you'll have ears to hear in jesus name chapter 2 verse 7 revelation to him that overcome it will i give to each of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise, he gives us promises. But then is for the overcomer. Look at verse 10. Not fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that he may that she may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation only ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. We shall wear a crown. I said we shall wear a crown. Verse 11, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh, he that overcometh, the promise is not to the church goer. The promise is not to the bench warmer in the church. The promise is not for the idle one in the church. The promise is not for the one that are not fighting. The person that is not fighting the good fight of faith. The promise is for those who earnestly contain. For the faith was delivered unto the saints. The promise is for the people that are fighting the battle of the Lord. And because they fight in the strength of the Lord, they overcome. That's why it says, he that overcometh shall not be hurt in the second death. As we go on, it looks at verse 17, chapter 2. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, to him that overcometh. In every church, the promise of life eternal in the world shall come. And the promise of all the promises that he has made unto us in that heavenly place is not to just everybody, every deacon Harry. It's not to the people that are, you know, crawling and cringing before the devil. It's not for the people that are cowardly and they commising in the is for the one that hope to him that overcometh will I give to each of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it. I'm looking at verse 25 in that chapter 2. It says, he, but, but that which thou hast already hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. Hold on for a moment to a December retreat. And by the time we're having the Covenant Sundays in January, everything they got in December and January, they have lost. There are people that come to all those meetings of, of the Covenant in January, and then by the time we're having Easter in March or April, lost everything. There are some people that come to Easter retreat in, in March or April, and by the time you're having revival in May, they have lost everything everything that they got in March or April. There are people that come to the workers' retreat in a, in a time like this, at the beginning of August. By the time you call another meeting again in September, they have lost what they have got in August. And it says, we hold it firm 
until the very end, which means what you get in January will go with you all through in February and March and April to the end of the year and then to the end of your life. There are people do not they do not have a stable conviction that you come to a meeting like this and the conviction you had and the sacrifice you laid on the altar and the decisions that you took. Here is the way I will walk. Here is the way I will live. Here is what my commitment will be. And they cannot hold on to that conviction until the very end. But Jesus said, the people who are going to get over there in the glory land beyond, they are the people that hold fast until, not just until December. Not just until the following year, until I come, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Unto the end. That's not the end of the year. Unto the end. The end of your life. And the end of this age. Unto the end. You have his word. You have his work. You have his will. And you hold on to the very end. Then it says, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. You'll find at the end of every letter is about the overcomer. I'm looking at chapter 3, verse 5. Verse 5, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white trimmage. The people who overcome. Jesus did not change from church to church. There are some people that tell us that Jesus Christ, maybe when we get over there, is going to have different standard, different chassis, different measuring rod. For the church over there, oh, they didn't understand sanctification. Therefore, God is going to judge them on this level. And it's not going to look for overcomers there. It's going to tolerate sin. It's going to tolerate, uh, you know, a kind of a weak, weak, a weak Christianity from over there. And over there, it's going to give them some allowance. You know, the church in the village, they can follow everything. It's not going to look for overcomers there. It's just going to make sure there is good. They think that God has a quota system. A quota system them whereby 2% must come from there, 5% must come from there, 10% must come from there, whether they qualify or not, whether they overcome us or not, he must follow the quota system and get pulled from everywhere. Noah said that's wrong because he didn't follow the quota system at the time of Noah. All the people that were not overcome, to overcome sin, they didn't overcome Satan, they didn't overcome the flesh, all of them, they perished in the flood and Lord said that is wrong. There's no quota system. All the people in Sodom and Gomorrah that were not overcomers, they perished in the fire. And then Joshua said there's no quota system. All the people that backslid, even among the children of Israel, they breached their bones in the wilderness. There is no quota system. Whosoever, whosoever will have a reward on that final day. And he's even going to get there. He must be an overcomer. Look at chapter 3 from verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white trimmage, and I will not blot out his name of the book which I have written, but I will confess his name before my father and before angels. Chapter 3 reading from verse 9. In verse 9 it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. He will keep you in Jesus' name. I said he will keep us in Jesus' name which shall come upon all the world to trust them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, very soon. Behold, I'm coming suddenly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, 
him that overcometh. He cometh pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, and which cometh now out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Verse 13, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I pray you'll have the ear to hear. Verse 21, verse 21, to him that overcometh, even to the church in Laodicea, even to the church of the Laodiceans, the people that are local, you know, you think that Jesus Christ will manage some people there and say, I need candidates for heaven in every place. And whether they are right or not, I can lower the standard for those people so that some will be able to come in. Even the church of the Laodiceans is still the one to him that overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with in his throne? He that, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. You will hear. You will obey. You will keep the word of God in Jesus' name. Come on now to the end of Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 7. He that overcomes, this is the end of everything now. Great tribulation time over. The great uh, white throne judgment, chapter 20, all over. And the Lord is now introducing the new earth. And, and I saw Jerusalem, new Jerusalem coming from above. And the people that are going to get to that new Jerusalem, it says in verse 7, He overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. What about the people that do not overcome? What about the so fearful? They're so timid, and they cannot stand up for the truth. What does he say about them? Look at verse 8, but the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the mongers, and, and all last shall have their part in the lake, which burn it with fire and brimstone, which is, which is the second death. I pray that God will put courage in your heart in Jesus' name. The courage to stand and the courage to be forceful, and the courage to do the will of God, and the courage to follow after the conviction son, that the Lord has planted in our heart. Courage to obey the word of God all the way through from now until you see the Lord face to face. In chapter 22 of Revelation, Revelation 22, I'm reading from verse 12, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed, those are the overcomers. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. We're talking about the overcomers in the promised eternal world. Each of the epistles, each of the messages from the Lord Jesus Christ to all the churches, each message ends with a promise. A promise to the each promise has been given not only to the overcomers in that particular church, whether it's Ephesus or it's Mana or it's a Pagamos or it is Tatira, it's not only to that particular side, in Philadelphia or Laodicea, to all overcomers in every age, in every generation, all overcomers of all the, in all the churches from the beginning until Christ returns, they're given this promise of being for overcomers, the condition of inheriting the promises of God is the same for all periods of time. And for all believers in the ancient time and also in the modern till the end of time. The unchanging Christ does not be its requirements. The unchanging Christ cannot vary the terms with different churches in different places at different times, in different generations, in different nations. It remains constant. I've read it to you. He that overcometh, he that overcometh, he that overcometh everywhere. It is the same standard. Each message closes with he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Christ, at the end of each message to each church, calls the attention of each individual to consider, consider the message. 
be an overcomer and become a partaker of the promised eternal blessing in that country, in that better country, in that heavenly country which is to come. The message to each church was not limited to that church. It is what the Spirit has said or what the Spirit says in the very present tense continually unto the churches. In the first three messages, the Lord Jesus Christ said, He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. After he that overcometh. In the last messages, what begins says, To him that overcometh. And after that, he says that those who have ears to hear, let them decide. Let them stand for the truth. And let them stand so that they can prevail. And we're going to prevail. We're going to conquer in Jesus' name. Are you there? I said, we're going to prevail in Jesus' name. Overcomers, overcomers, not those who cringe, not those who are timid, not those who are fearful, not those who cannot confront the world in which they live, not those who cannot confront the village, the idolatry in that village, not those who cannot confront the city in which all the promiscuity, all the evil things that they have in that city, they, they, can, they, can, they don't have any backbone. But the overcomers, those are the people all these promises are meant for. I pray you'll be a partaker of the promises of the Lord in Jesus' name. We're looking at three things. Number one, proper person of an overcoming character, the proper objective on overcoming power of overcoming Christians, overcoming Christians, you'll be an overcoming Christian. I said you'll be an overcoming Christian. Number three, promise paradise for overcomers and conquerors. I'll be a conqueror. I said I'll be a conqueror. You'll be in Jesus' name. Number one, proper objectives of an overcoming character. We're looking at Revelation chapter 2 again, verse 7. Revelation chapter 2. Looking at verse 7, it says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, to him that overcometh. To him that overcometh, the Lord says, I will give to each of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. What did Jesus Christ here mean by saying to him that overcometh is the one having an overcoming character and is the one in the context of the message is he who overcomes the gain uh, and who overcomes and gains victory. He who conquers and he who is a conqueror and from what Jesus Christ said to this church is the overcomer who triumphs over the evil and the false thing of Balaam and the Nicolaitans. Already he told that church that you have the people there and they try to bring in the doctrine and the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He said, I hate that. Who are the overcomers then? The overcomers are the people that conquer false doctrine and they conquer all the deeds of the Nicolaitans and error tries to come in. You reject that. You trample it underfoot and you say no to that. That's the overcomer that when Balaam tries to bring his deception, when Balaam tries to bring his doctrine, when Balaam tries to bring his view, say no to that. Those are the overcomers. But then he goes on to tell us, we're looking at John chapter 16. Number start John chapter 16. We're looking at verse 33. The overcomers. John chapter 16, looking at verse 33 here. Here is what the Lord is saying about the overcomers. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace in the world, ye tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have come the world. When persecution comes and you keep on standing, that's the overcomer. If persecution comes and then you fall back. Persecution comes, then you cringe. Persecution comes, and then you compromise. Persecution comes, and then you cannot stand. That's not an overcomer. The overcomer is the person that says, here is what I stand for. Jesus Christ is Lord. Here is what I stand for. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Here is what I stand for. Jesus Christ owns me completely because he is my Redeemer. And even though persecution comes, and trial comes, and tribulation comes from any direction, you keep on standing where you stand. 
that is the overcomer. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. In Revelation chapter 3, at verse 21, the overcomer. Revelation chapter 3, looking at it, verse 21. He tells us in verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. What's that? It's the overcoming lukewarmness because that's reaching to the church of the Laodiceans that lukewarmness is coming in and they'll shake it off. You say, no, I'm going to keep away. Large city is coming in. Shake it off. That's the overcomer. Lawlessness is coming in. You shake it off and then all the levity and all the frivolity is coming in. You say, no, it will not have a chance here anymore. I will be sober. I'll be vigilant. I'll be righteous. I will not allow anything to pollute this Christian faith I have now, that person is the overcomer. He tells us in a first John chapter 5, first John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, the world. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatever is originating from the world. Whatever is emanating from the God, it is presented to you. It may be presented in a very good way, in a very nice way. Why don't you try this? Why don't you examine this? Why don't you take this on board? Why don't you add this to your worship? Why don't you add this to your conviction? Why don't you add this to your ceremonies? It's coming from the world, and it's coming from the God of this world, and then you overcome that. You put it under your feet. You say, it will not place here. They're introducing some books to you. And those books contain ideas of the world, the methods of the world, the ideology of the world, the thing that will sway you away from the Christian faith. And you say, I don't, I'm not even going to send spend God's money to buy any book that's talking of the world because the world is an enemy of God. How can I spend God's money and then purchase that? Any from all the all the people that are worshipping, but you know, they have a, this idea, they have this idea. They say, you know, you'll be morally strong, you, you have this and you have this. And then you know that it's coming from those people that do not believe in the Lord. You say, no, I'm not going to spend God's to buy that whatsoever. is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God be an overcomer. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 12. We're looking at verse 21. A proper perspective concerning the people that have overcoming character. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Be not, but overcome evil with good. Be not overcome of sin. Overcome sin with righteousness. Be not overcome of fraud covetousness. You overcome covetousness with contentment. Be not overcome of godlessness. Don't let the godlessness in society overcome you. Overcome godlessness, godliness. Be not overcome of pride. Overcome that pride with humility. All those characteristics, all those ideas, all that evil nature coming from the world, wanting to stamp out your Christian testimony and stamp out your Christian conviction. It says you will not allow all those uh, messy things coming from the world. The grace of God in you, the spirit of God in you, the power of God in you will overcome all those things of the world. That's how we become overcomers. We remain overcomers in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Romans chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 35. Romans chapter 8 verse 35. The devil will try pressure on you and the pressure is to make you cringe. Is to crush you. Is to get you out of the way. Is to make a nonsense. All the promises you made, Lord. All the covenant you made to the Lord. I will serve the Lord. I will follow the Lord. I will obey the word of God. I'm not going to allow anything to set me back to where I'm coming from. My eyes are set. And I'm looking at the goal before me. The devil will try to put some pressure on you. So that you will go back on that word. And it is when you overcome that pressure, you are and overcomer, we will be overcomers in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
We love Christ so much. We have willed our lives to him. We love Christ so much. Everything we have, everything we ever hope to be, we have given unto the Lord. And then they pray from the devil that, no, you're not serious. You'll not be that committed. You'll not be that consecrated. You'll not give your life to the Lord so much like that. And he tried to separate you from the covenant age unto the Lord. It says, so shall us from the love of Christ shall tribulation, that's it, is the pressure of the world, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we're killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. That is, in the midst of the tribulation, in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the opposition, we are more conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. That's a person that has made up his mind. That's a person that says, come what me, whatever the cause, I'm going to be an overcomer. That's a person that talks like that. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, even things I may not know now, things you may not know now, no. it will come later. And when it comes from any, in any shape and in any size, you make up your mind and persuade that none of those things will separate me from the commitment I've made unto the Lord. It says, nah, no height, no death, no any other creature, no any other creature, no any other creature. I'm sure you don't love a friend to the point that that friend will take eternal life away from you. I'm sure you don't love a business partner to the point that that business partner will take eternal life from you. I'm sure that you are not in covenant with anybody that you say is a special person in my life. She's a special person in my life and I will allow this creature to take heaven away from me. Be wise. Heaven is more the life in heaven is more than 100 years, a 1,000 years, 10,000 years, a million years, a trillion years. is for all eternity. And you don't allow any creature to take the possibility of getting into heaven from you. And then you get into hell. I love so and so, so much. I will get hell because of him. I'll get to hell because of her. 10 years in hell, 20 years in hell, 100 years in hell, 1,000 years in hell, a million years in hell. You better lose whatever you are going to lose on earth so that this heaven you will get to that heaven in Jesus name so that you will say neither height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord that, that's what it means to be an overcomer that you lay everything upon the altar and, and you are saying that nothing will take this salvation away from me sometimes it's your flesh that wants to take that eternal life away from you, wants you to exalt your flesh above Christ, wants you to exalt the need of the flesh above the need of obeying Christ. That's why Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 27, it says, but I keep my body under. And you know, sometimes you have to do even that to your body. Even that to your eyes. Your eyes would like to read almost everything they publish over there in those magazines. Your life, your eyes would like to see all those pictures they publish there in those uh, magazines. And then your eyes would like to see all those uh, things that come up on the internet. But you're making a covenant to your sin. I'm not going to allow all these passing pleasures, all this pornography and everything. I'm not going to allow that to hinder me. That heaven, I will get there. That heaven, I will Get, am I talking about you there? I said that heaven, I will get there. Are you going to be there? You'll be there in Jesus. That's why you say, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. And bring it into subjection. You know, there are some other people, there are some people, especially those of us who are leaders. All we do is that we try to discipline other people. We say, now, you cannot do step aside, step aside. And why don't you tell yourself, you say, I'm going to discipline myself more than I discipline other people. People. If there is any number one person to discipline, it's myself. You tell yourself that 
There are some leaders they carry you know, a big stick all around. I discipline you. I discipline. Hey, stop that. I stop, discipline yourself first and say, this body, I bring you under control. This tongue, I bring you under control. These ears, I bring you under control. My heart, my mind, I bring you under control. That's what Paul, the apostle, said. said before I even talk to other people, sit down there, step aside there. He says, what I'm going to do is, I keep under my body, and then I bring this body of mine into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself apostle. I myself a great missionary evangelist. I myself a great preacher prophet. I myself a great pastor. I myself a great person that God used. He went through prison. He went through all those uh, tribulations and all those trials. He went through all those challenges and difficulties. And yet he said, all the suffering in those, in, in those prisons will not get me to heaven if I don't put my body under subjection. And all the things I have done, all the things I have paid, everything I laid upon the altar, if I allow my body to take over, if I allow my body to go into a scriptural kind of pleasure, he says that will not save me on that final day. That's why he said, I put myself under, and then lest after I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. I pray you'll not be a castaway in Jesus' name. Those are the overcomers. What's the prevailing power of the overcoming character, of the overcoming Christian? The prevailing, the prevailing power. What makes us to overcome? What makes us to have real victory over all those things? We're looking at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, we're looking at verse 9. It says in verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that were all serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and, and, and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of, the, of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God, day and night, and they overcame him. And they overcame him. And the believers overcame him. And the followers of Christ, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They said, we'll pay whatever price we're going to pay. We're not going to allow the threats of death and the threats of suffering and the threats of imprisonment and the threats of persecution to stop us. And that's what makes us overcome. When you make up your mind. And when the devil knows that whatever he throws at you, you're going to be an overcomer. You are determined to be an overcomer. It's not going to bother you as it bothered you if you are fearful and you want to chicken out in every situation. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. Revelation chapter 2 reading from verse 13. It tells us here it says, I know thy walls and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Maybe you live in a community where occultism is rife. Occultism is high. Occultism is so much pronounced. And yet you are taking your stand because, you know, all those things, they cannot touch you in Jesus' name. There's a wall of fire around you. And it says, the word of God says very clearly, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. I said no weapon that fashion against you shall prosper. Every one that comes against you in judgment, you are going to condemn in Jesus' name. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to give you so much honor, so much respect, so much reverence, and so much power that all those synagogues of Satan, they'll come and bow before you in Jesus' name. But you have to be an overcomer. You have to be an overcomer. I'll be an overcomer. In First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 12. It says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, verse 13, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. Ye have overcome the wicked one. You will overcome the wicked one in Jesus' name. The wicked one wants you to sin 
wants you to backslide, wants you to give up the faith, wants you to kind of adjust the word of God, uh, mutilate the word of God, adulterate the word of God. But you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it as pure as I've got it. I'm going to keep it as righteous as I've got it. And I'm not going to change the word of God. If anything ought to change, I will change so that I can comply with the word of God. And he says, I write to a young man because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because ye have known the father. I write, I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong. Ye are strong. Ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you. That's the prevailing power. When the word of God abides in you, abide in me and let my word abide in you. And then when you pray, you are praying according to the word that's abiding in you. That's how we become more than conquerors. That's how we become overcomers. And then it says, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Verse 15, love not the world. It weakens you when you love the world. Love not the world. It makes God to depart from you when you love the world. Love not the world. It gives you guilt and condemnation when you love the world. Love not the world. It makes the devil your master because the devil is the God of this world. And when you love, he says, already you're under my control. But when you don't love the world, then he will be under your feet. I said he will be under your feet. That's why it says in verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Then it says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, for all that is in the world. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is of ace of the world, and the world passeth away. The fashion of this world is passing away. All the people, all the powerful, mighty things in this world, they are passing away. The politics of the world is passing away. And then it says, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's how to overcome. You do the will of God, you'll abide forever. First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye yeah, have got little children and have overcome them. How do we overcome them? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It tells us the weapon of our warfare in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Looking at it from verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of warfare are not worldly. The weapons of our warfare are not secular. The weapons of our warfare is not coming from the head. It's not a mental thing, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. The weapons we have, able to give us a victory, able to make us conquer, because it casts down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. In the knowledge of God you have God, there are some ideas that will come, exalting itself as if that knowledge now, the new knowledge, the new era, is something that is greater, something that is higher, something that is coming from a higher source. But you are telling the Lord, I know I've got the highest in the gospel. I know I've got the highest sin. The truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, I know I've got the highest sin. Any other sin that comes to confront that truth you have got, it says it will cast down, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, this is how we conquer, this is how we overcome. You put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, finally, brethren, my brethren, Brethren, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord, we can be strong. In the Lord, we're going to be strong. Outside the Lord, you're weak. In yourself, you're weak. In all the ideologies of men, you are weak. Here is what makes you strong. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When you plunge yourself into the river of the Holy Ghost, when you plunge yourself into the unction of the Holy Ghost, when you envelope yourself in the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is stronger, greater, mightier than any other spirit. Be strong in the Lord then and in the power of his might. 
light, put on the whole armor of God, that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, against the strategies of the devil, against the maneuvering of the devil, against all those strategies of the devil. When you plunge yourself and you are you plunge yourself into the grace of God and you are enveloped by the word and the power of the Lord, you will be strong. Then it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Don't say, I can do without that. No, you cannot. I can do without that other armor. You know you cannot. All the total armor, the whole armor of God, it says, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. We need that truth, that truth. We need the sound doctrine of the word of God. That's what keeps us. That's what keeps us. And it says, it is you girt about yourself with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. We need righteousness. We need godliness. We need holiness. We need sanctification. It says your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You are declaring the peace of God and the prince of peace and the salvation that brings peace. You are declaring Clearing it to everyone, everywhere you go, and above all, taking the shield of faith, where we, we sh ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and praying always, praying, not praying sometimes, not praying occasionally, but praying always, with all prayer, all forms of prayer, short prayer, long prayer, day prayer, night prayer, midnight prayer, all forms of prayer, and supplication in the spirit watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's what the Lord is telling us and is saying that he has enough grace, he has enough power, he has enough strength to keep us unwavering and to keep us uncompromising and is able to do that as we put on the whole armor of God. He will do that in our lives in Jesus' name. If you have not got enough supply of the grace of God, come and pray again. If you have not got enough supply of the unction, of the Holy Ghost, of the power, the stabilizing power that makes you to stand firm in any any situation, all you need to do is get on your knees again and pray to the Lord, and all the abundance of the grace you need will be given unto you in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now, that is the promised paradise to overcomers and conquerors. Promised paradise to overcomers and the conquerors. You see, the gains and the profit of living a righteous life, a holy life, an overcoming life, a conquering life, they're very great. In fact, it tells us in, 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 in a number of ways, number Number one, he says, is going to give us of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Which means you'll get to heaven, you'll get to that paradise, and then all that Adam lost, all that Eve lost, because we are not able to take of that tree of life, the Lord says, is going to give unto us. Number two, it will give us a crown of life, the crown of life. Number three, it will make us escape the hurt and the suffering of the second death. And then that means that all the eternal separation from God that other people are going to experience and they are going to be in the lake of fire forever and ever. The Lord says that it's a possibility of escape so that we will be in fellowship with the Lord forever and ever. Number four, it says there's a hidden manna, angel's food that men have not eaten. It says he's going to give that unto us. Number five, it's a white stone the, that is of God's continual eternal approval. That white stone is given to the people that they'll never face judgment any more. They are passed from condemnation unto justification. And the Lord says that eternal approval is awaiting you. And we're going to have that approval, that reward in Jesus' name. Number six, it says there's a new name. Number seven, it says there's power over the nations. You'll see reign over two cities and reign over three cities and reign over five cities according as your reward will be. And then number eight is the morning star. That's the glory of the glorified Christ himself that is going to give to the people that overcome. Number nine, 
eternal fellowship with Christ, walking with Christ in white, in white, in white over there in the heavenly city and heavenly glory and splendor. Number 10 is Christ's recognition in heaven before his father. He says, because you confess me here on earth, I will also confess you before my father in heaven. Number 11 is, uh, is he'll make you a pillar in the temple of his God so that you will not go out anymore but forever and ever you'll be with the Lord. Then number 12 is permanent residence in the immediate presence of the almighty God. Permanent residence in the immediate presence of the almighty God. And then number 13, privilege of sitting with Christ on the throne. Because you overcome, as she has overcome, it says, you will sit with me on my throne, even as I sit with my father. Number 14 is inheriting all things, all things belonging to God all, all through eternity. What a great and glorious eternal future awaits all the overcoming believers in Christ. What a glorious future we have. It is worth the effort to pay the price of overcoming, of overcoming the world, overcoming its temptations, overcoming all easily besetting sins, overcoming and standing firm, unshaking in our faith in Christ until the very end. Look at Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. And see the promise awaiting us, awaiting the overcomers. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, will I give to each of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Chapter 2 and in verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Whatever we suffer today, compare that with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going into the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. What you suffer today is nothing. And compare that with, uh, with Daniel going to the lion's den. What you appear to suffer today is nothing. Compare Paul, the apostle, going to the prison in Philippi. And in all the other places, what you suffer today is nothing. That's why he's saying for all the minor, minor skirmishes that is coming your way, fear none of those uh, things which thou shalt suffer. Be Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, and that she may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation, persecution, pressure, only ten days. And I told you, ten days out of 365 is very brief. It's just a short period of time. It's in, in comparison with eternity. Whatever you go through here on earth is nothing. And then it says, shall, it says, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. I will give you a crown of life. He will give us a crown of life in Jesus' name. We're looking at chapter 2, verse 17. It says, He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the healing manna. That is angels' food that men do not know anything about today. I'll give that healing manna, and I will and I will give you a white stone, and in the stone a new name reaching, which no man knoweth saving except he that receiveth it. It tells us in verse 25, it says, But that which thou hast already. Hold fast till I come. This, these are days of when people they hold a religion or righteousness or salvation or doctrine or whatever it is the Lord has given them in the church. They hold with loose hand. But the Lord is saying hold fast until I come. Hold fast until I come. There's some people before they go to school they're very fervent. But then after getting to school something blows on them. No fervency anymore. Until I come. There's some people well, until they go to, until they get the job, they're very fervent. They go to all the meetings. They believe the Lord. They stand for the Lord. When they get a job, because of the challenges of that job, then they are not holding firm anymore. Some people, before they get married, they hold fast. And then after getting married, something comes upon them. Marriage now is number one. Honeymoon is now number one. Everything about marriage and this and that pleasure is now number one. Hold fast until I come. Some people, when they are looking for children. Oh God, give me children. Miracle baby, miracle baby. 
and then their father and they are coming to all the meetings now baby has come and all those uh, children they have now come and because of that sister we're not seeing you again pastor look at my condition look at that child and look at that child and to make ends meet they cannot hold fast anymore some people before, before they become workers in the church they're very far they're, they're, they're all up and running and then the pastor is looking at them and saying this fellow looks very serious very committed looks like we need to commit something into his son into our hand after they have got that thing then everything now is quiet all the fervency is gone all the commitment is gone but it says you hold fast until i come whatever you have got whatever you are yet to get hold fast until i come he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end keepeth my works unto the end it's a great privilege to work for the lord and that privilege of working for the lord he wants to you to keep that until he comes he says to him will i give power over the nations it will make you ruler over the nations i pray it will happen in jesus name chapter 3 verse 5 he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. You see, when you're holding fast and you'll not compromise, you'll not backslide, it says you'll be there in the book of life for the, you know, until you see him face to face. We're looking at it in verse 8 now of that chapter 3. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open Dog, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and thou hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. It says, doors of opportunity, not of opportunity for business, opportunity for trade, opportunity for material things. It's talking about opportunity of preaching the gospel, opportunity of reaching out for the word of God. In other place, a door will open in that nation. Somebody needs to go there. A door will will open in that community. Another person wants to go there. And as the Lord is opening the doors of opportunity for ministries, we'll get into those ministries in Jesus' name. Look at verse 11. In verse 11 it says, Behold, I come quickly and it's going to come suddenly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall no more go out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name what a great privilege we have in fact it tells us now as we look at chapter 3 verse 21 to him that overcome it will I grant to sit with me in my throne what a great privilege. You'll pay anything for that. If uh, maybe the president of a powerful country will invite you that if you fulfill this condition, this condition, that condition, you'll sit with him on the throne in the, you know, in the capital of their country. You, you'll uh, try to do that. You'll try to fulfill the condition. But now, here is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he says, he's sitting, he's sitting on the throne of the universe. And he's saying, when you overcome, what a privilege that is. You will seat with him on his throne just as he overcame and is seated together with his father on the throne. In fact, he tells us in chapter 21, chapter 21 of Revelation. And I'm reading here from verse 4. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit all things Whatever it is your heart dreams of and your heart, uh, you know, desires, it says, if you overcome here in this world, here in this life, it will make you to inherit all things. And then in the life to come, you'll inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. 
you'll overcome in Jesus' name. You have to make up your mind with all these promises the Lord has given us and all these things are waiting us that by the grace of God, in the strength of the Lord, you're going to be an overcomer. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. We'll rise up and talk to the Lord everything you have got during this uh, retreat, everything that you know you have uh, laid on the altar during this uh, workers' retreat so that you'll be an overcomer. We, just, we didn't just come and then after we have come there, we go back just like that. We are here so so that by the grace of God in the strength of the Lord, we will be overcomers for the rest of our lives. Temptation comes, be an overcomer. Trial comes, be an overcomer. Whatever it is, whatever challenge you are facing, when you get back home, when you get to back to the place of ministry, you will be an overcomer. You pray and open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Be an overcomer. Be an overcomer. We're asking all our state overseers and region overseers and all the leaders in all those, uh, all the places where we are. You take over now and lead our people in real prayer, although we're shutting off the, uh, uh, the transmission now, but we are still praying over here at the headquarters. We want to be overcomers and let everybody actually pray so that by the grace of God, everyone will be overcomers. We go to the Earth Fellowship overcomers. We go to Women Fellowship overcomers and we go to the Youth Section overcomers, Children's Section overcomers, all the leaders all the workers in the campus section overcomers and then in the adult church overcomers that sin will not overcome us anymore and evil will not overcome us anymore will go from strength to strength from courage to courage will be overcomers and as you go in the ministry this work will prosper in your and open your mouth and pray we will be overcomers open your